JJK's Shibuya incident and MHA's Paranormal Liberation War are arcs that, on paper, are very similar. They're both arcs that are supposed to be pivotal moments in the story, where the progression of the antagonist's abilities, skills, and knowledge leads to an all-out altercation between the good guys and the bad guys, leading to moments that will forever change the direction of the story. But the difference in execution between these two is something I find absolutely fascinating. While MHA mostly fumbles and stumbles what could and should have been the most interesting arc in the entire series, JJK Shibuya Incident has already become one of the most acclaimed and iconic arcs in modern shonen history. So how exactly did Jujutsu Kaisen manage to outperform My Hero Academia in a structurally similar story arc? Well, let's find out. Before I continue, i just like to say that I am not a writer. I did not take any classes in writing, so it's possible that I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Nothing being said here is supposed to be objective, so this whole video is mostly just my opinion. The biggest problem with MHA's war arc is that despite it being full of very interesting ideas and singular fantastic moments, none of it really connects or has a grand impact as it's supposed to be. MHA has always been a series that prioritized characters' actions having deep and lasting consequences, so it's extremely disappointing to see so many fantastic moments be subsequently ruined by fakeouts and just very safe writing. Bakugo getting impaled right at the end of one episode is an absolutely shocking and jaw-dropping event. Combine this with his inner monologue and the sheer intensity of the fight that preceded all of this, the audience is led to believe that something big had just happened. Now, we all know that Bakugo isn't going to die. Anyone with half a brain knows that Horikoshi isn't going to kill off his most popular character at this point in the story. But the problem is, there's no consequence for this, so this moment is effectively ruined. JJK also runs into a similar problem here, where Gojo, who's the most popular character, and not coincidentally, also the most powerful, cannot die in a huge war arc. But JJK does something really smart. Throughout Season 1 of JJK, the audience learns to associate Gojo with safety and security, from the very first episode right up until his last appearance. You can pretty much expect Gojo's presence to be the end of any conflict. Then in Season 2, the hidden inventory arc not only reaffirms this, but by giving us a mini-arc that delves into his backstory, it also makes you care a lot more about him. So what does the Shibuya Incident arc do almost immediately? Gojo's gone. Getting rid of Gojo is the decision that makes the Shibuya incident so impactful, because the trump card of our heroes is gone, so the stakes feel much higher than before. Now, this is where most stories would immediately falter, and that is by not living up to the very high stakes that have just been established. But JJK goes the full mile with this. We know that the curses are dangerous because of what happened with Junpei, and we know that all the sorcerers are in immediate danger because all of the strongest curses are present in Shibuya. So there's already this huge tension when these fights start going down. So when JJK actually kills off some of its supporting and main cast, it's impactful. I think that right there is the major difference between MHA's war arc and the Shibuya incident. Not to say that the paranormal liberation war isn't impactful, but because of how it's written, it just doesn't feel as great as a war arc should be. I know killing off characters and having darker tones doesn't immediately make a story better, but I feel like a war arc should be, you know, like a war. Like where people actually die and there are serious physical, emotional, and mental consequences. And the audience should care about these consequences. When Twice dies, because we've spent time with him and had an entire arc in the previous season dedicated to the League of Villains, we feel impacted by his death. And he's not even one of the good guys. When it comes to the heroes, there is basically no impact because the audience doesn't care about any of the deaths the heroes face. Like, I didn't even know who Crust was before he died, because there was a complete lack of focus on his character prior to his death. Even Midnight, whose death is supposed to shock us the most, feels so hollow because... Who cares? What do we actually know about Midnight? What do we know about her other than the fact that she's a hero who sometimes teaches her students? Midnight's death is indicative of a larger issue with MHA's war arc, and it's that the story doesn't want to have consequences anymore. Now you might say, that's ridiculous, Midnight is a recurring character that died. 
And you'd be right, but it's that thing that writers do where they kill off less important characters to make it seem like there's more tension in the story than there actually is. Main characters and fan favorites will always have a lot of plot armor, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Plot armored characters don't mean that the story can't have its deaths be impactful, but in the case of MHA's war arc, it would be a lot more interesting if characters we had actually grown to know died. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this was Horikoshi's original plan. Early on in the arc, we have moments between Kaminari and Jiro that imply a romantic pairing, which prior to this was only really vaguely hinted at through gags and minor conversations. But because of how it's framed, naturally I assumed that we were bracing to see one of these characters either be seriously injured or die. And I know this isn't enough evidence to wholeheartedly prove my theory, but consider how we actually got a whole arc where Jira was essentially the main character and we actually got to know a lot more about her. I think killing her off at this point in the story would serve as a huge dramatic and emotional blow to the audience. I mean, you've gotta be smart about these things. Because of MHA's power creep, these final arcs will eventually have to leave most of Class 1A out of major fights. So decommissioning a few of them along the way right here would be pretty clever. It would be absolutely ridiculous if Jiro fought against All for One or something. Absolutely ridiculous. Deku completely destroys his arms in a desperate battle against Shigaraki, and despite the show making such a big deal out of this, nothing happens. Deku's body has apparently adjusted and was able to withstand him going all out. I hate this so much. Up until this point, there's been so much focus on Deku's gradual growth as he molds his body to be able to better use one for all, but suddenly, he can just use 100% multiple times and nothing happens? Remember when he literally changed up his entire fighting style because he couldn't keep straining his arms? This is why this arc feels so hollow. It's giving the illusion of consequences while never fully committing to any of the incredibly interesting conflicts it sets up. And a lot of that ends up bleeding into the villain hunt arc, but for the sake of this video, I'll only keep it to the war arc. Speaking of villains, holy hell, the Shibuya incident is the exact moment I realized that these curses were not playing around. Don't get me wrong, they were a threat in season 1, but we constantly saw them get absolutely dogwalked immediately after they did something crazy. Compare that with how much more threatening and dangerous they are here, and it's night and day. I find it interesting that both Shigaraki and Mahito have abilities that basically mean if they touch you, you're dead. Yet Mahito feels far more dangerous because we've seen him kill characters we care about time and time again. I don't care that Crust is dead. I would have cared if Gran Torino died, but nope, he's okay. Shigaraki punched a hole through this old man's body and he is perfectly fine. In fact, all of the villains in the war arc are just super lame. Do you remember when they invaded UA and it was legitimately terrifying because they clearly overpowered all the students? Remember when All For One's mere presence changed the entire atmosphere of an episode? In the war arc, we have to remember that the villains that have supposedly become more and more powerful are being outsmarted and beaten by first-year high schoolers. The only aspect of the war arc I feel really works as intended is the reveal with Dobby. Not only does this work because it's a massive revelation, but also because it completely changes how we both see Endeavor and Dobby. Not to mention, it ties back into the ideas of the last few arcs criticizing how hero society actually works. MHA's war arc is so strange because it's clearly supposed to be this big story-changing event that has been building up since All Might's retirement, but nothing really changes, nothing really matters. There's a distinct lack of reaction from the students of Class 1A to almost all of the events that unfold, and this is kind of bad considering these are the characters we know and care about the most. How does Ida punching Deku for being reckless have far more emotional weight than multiple students coming across their teacher's corpse? There's a lot more I could go into, but all of that would sort of end up bleeding into the villain hunt dark hero arc, so I'll save that for later, but I'll end with this. If you were to ask me what moments in JJK I believe will fondly stick with me, I would mention Gojo's capture, Nanami's death, Sukuna vs. Jogo, and so many more that I can't even begin to list from the Shibuya arc. On the other hand, if you were to ask me what moments in MHA I think will stick with me, most of them wouldn't be from the war arc, because MHA's war arc is, quite frankly, pretty forgettable in the grand scheme of things. It's masquerading as this epic, unforgettable climax, but it ultimately ends up being shallow, disappointing, and not that interesting at the end of it all. And the saddest part is, 
This arc was just the beginning of what I would call the downfall of My Hero Academia. But that's a story for another video. Until next time, I'm out of here.